Welcome back. Let's now talk about the face-off, literally, that the government is having with Twitter right now after government threatened Twitter with legal action if they did not comply with the orders that were given to them with regards to certain accounts. Soon after, Indian government threatened the American social media giant Twitter of legal action for non-compliance of government order. Twitter has reached out to the government and initiated talks. Twitter in an official statement has now said that it has reached out to the IT minister for a formal dialogue over government's concerns of blocking accounts which allegedly instigated violence over the farmers issue. Ayushman is joining me now with more information. So Ayushman, looking at this uh, tussle between the government of India and Twitter, uh, this is with regards to the government's order on the 31st of January, which the Twitter apparently had said that there cannot be a, 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 a compliance in that sense because they will only follow their own rules. Further to that response, what is the next uh, development that has happened now in this? Well, yesterday, uh, the Twitter reached out uh, to the government and the formal talks were uh, uh, set to start. And today, from the government sources, we are being told that uh, the, just the, for, uh, the formal talks uh, will be starting because uh, Twitter has also approached the government in this regard. Uh, the government has said that over 1,000 uh, uh, users are there, uh, the, which are, uh, in fact, on their Twitter, uh, on the Twitter and are currently uh, using uh, the social media platform for uh, pushing the... Uh, uh, anti-India agenda which the government has complained about and the Twitter has to act on it. Initially we saw over 270 handles being suspended but on these handles, these more than 1100 handles, what will be done that is still unclear and the government had clearly said that uh, as per the rules and regulation uh, action has to be taken after which Twitter reached out to government and currently we are being told that a formal dialogue between government and the Twitter officials uh, is uh, about to take place because both the uh, sides have uh, uh, now reached, uh, uh, have now met and the formal dialogues will be taking place on blocking and unblocking of the account. The government has clearly said that on the uh, social media platform, yes. there are certain bots which are, uh, which are using these accounts to push the anti-India narrative and that is something that the social media uh, giant should look into this. Right. I have Nikhil Pawa, editor of Media Nama, joining me on the phone line. Good afternoon, Mr. Pawa. We are talking about this particular order uh, sent by the government of India to Twitter to remove uh, 1,178 accounts of Khalistani sympathizers to which no action has been taken yet. And Twitter wants to now have a dialogue about the government's concerns. The way this is going, uh, you know, uh, do you think that, yes, there can be a case or an argument built around the fact that if there are real threats, uh, govern, government of a concerned country can appeal to a social media giant to actually have those accounts removed or do you think that removing those particular posts is good enough? So, uh, the way I look at it, and if you go back to the Shreya Sangu judgment of 2015, in that, uh, what the Supreme Court had laid down as a guideline for censorship of speech was the fact that if something is advocacy, then uh, that is not a problem. But if something is inciting violence, then that needs to be taken down. That being said, <coughs> if there okay. are seditious tweets that are there and they are being made on a mm. consistent basis, which is in violation of, of, uh, of, of Indian law, then the government has every right to ask for those uh, handles to be banned but under Section 16, uh, you, uh, my sense is that if these orders are being issued under Section 69 of the IT Act, then that should pertain only to specific tweets and not entire Twitter accounts or Twitter handles. And it should be up to the uh, decision yes. of the platform itself whether it views someone as a, as a repeat offender or not. Mm. See, because what happened even with, with Donald Trump was Donald Trump was a repeat offender, and mm. uh, that 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 consistent okay. offense uh, of of inciting violence and inciting hatred led to the ban of 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 Trump's account. The, see, I, it's very difficult to actually. Yes, but in this case, Nikhil Pawa, what becomes important is also to understand that who gets the last word, who's the final authority in this, because you are and, saying and, that, and that yes, the government has asked for all these accounts to be removed, but it is up to Twitter to decide. Okay. No, no. See, that's that's under Section 79 of the IT Act. Now, the the 
who should be the final authority in my view is actually the judiciary in this case the problem is mm. we do not know the legitimacy of the orders that have been given by the government and the way section 69a functions is that the government uh, issues an order and then a government committee sits on it to verify the the legitimacy of the order now if you know last uh, over the last couple of weeks there have been news organizations whose accounts have also been banned under section 69 so the efficacy of the order the legitimacy of these orders yes. is clearly questionable and so therefore uh, the lack of transparency from the government mm. under section 69 is a problem and therefore the in in the in the 2015 okay. uh, shreya singhal case where the supreme court had an opportunity to write this uh, the, that mm. particular section of the it act down it did not do so because it felt that the, that that this process of adjudication by the government itself would be fine but it's very clear that it is not and therefore the supreme court i mean this section 69 of the it act needs to be declared unconstitutional because it is being used in a manner allegedly and what it appears to be in in a manner where the government is is not necessarily issuing legitimate orders but because there is no transparency there it can't be questioned publicly either So we need transparency okay. so that there is actual accountability. Okay, but in this so case, uh, Nikhil Pawar, the, the government yes. is warning Twitter that they will be liable to legal action if they do not comply. So it is the government uh, that is now taking an upper hand and saying that either you fall in line, or either you, the, you yeah, remove these accounts or yes. face consequences, legal consequences. And, and and that is the power that the government of India has under Section 69 of the IT Act, and therefore it is free to exercise that right. but my point okay. is twitter in in or if these hmm. if these orders are not legitimate as per twitter then it needs to challenge these orders in court hmm. so that there is a discussion on the legitimacy of the law itself of the section 69a itself and i think this is a very important moment in our in in the okay. history of the it act that that we are at this face off between twitter and the indian hmm. government and this must go to the, to this logical conclusion from that mm. on absolutely like you said a very important juncture that we are in to decide these matters these are delicate issues on one hand of course the freedom of speech and expression uh, and the on the other hand the government has certain responsibilities to monitor Uh, these social media platforms especially uh, those that can become highly influential or provocative or inflammatory uh, in that sense so therefore that's an important issue as well thanks for joining us nikhil pawa with your inputs on this let's take a short break now news and updates continue on the other side stay with us